Good morning, everyone. It's very nice to be in this gathering of data scientists. I've been coming to Strata for a long time, and it's really cool to see how uh, the community has grown, not just in size, but also in diversity, in global reach, and all the new ideas that are out here this time. So the idea that I'm going to talk about is about creating the digital brain. And uh, what does that mean? So creating the digital brain is actually to do with something that we have all heard of and talked about a lot, the Internet of Things. So what is the status of the Internet of Things today? So we have very good tools today to do analytics on big data. We have the platform, we have the practitioners, we have the people who make use of that. And we also have a lot of smart machines, machines which have a lot of intelligence built into them, and, they, and we are able to collect the data from them. But let's think about it. Are we where we really want to be with the Internet of Things, or is there more that we can do? For example, think about the Macondo disaster, the oil platform uh, blowout that happened in Gulf of Mexico a few years back. Can the Internet of Things as it exists today help us prevent something like that? Now, the mo moment we think about that, uh, that's the germ, where the germ of the idea comes from. What if we could prevent disasters like this? What do we need to do to, to, do to prevent disasters like this? Of course, we need better safety protocols. We need better regulation. But what if the whole system was smart and it would know when something goes wrong and would be able to take action? Isn't that the best way to prevent something like that? So let's see where we are in terms of being able to create a smart system which would be able to accomplish that. So we have all the ingredients of a smart system in place. We have the sensors, which are smart and getting smarter all the time. In fact, all of you have a lot of sensors on you today. You have smartphones. You probably have Fitbits and other interesting things, which are all recording a lot of data. We have actuators, which are very sophisticated and attached to control systems, which can enable action from a distance. The picture in the middle bottom is a blowout preventer made by GE, which is attached to an offshore drilling rig. And what it does is that it sends back an amazing amount of data about the status of the drilling. And finally, we have decision support tools, which can take all this big data in and analyze that and you know, give the human operators a very good idea of what's going on, and that's great. But what the system still has is there are delays between one stage and another. There is a lot of room for error. The problem is that there is no brain. We have the eyes, we have the limbs, but they're not really connected to a brain seamlessly. So think about how a brain works. Think of what a baseball batter does. He sees the ball coming. The brain basically analyzes this, those sensations to compute the trajectory of the ball, decides what action to take, and tells the body to take that action. And the result is a seamless response to a stimulus. So let's put a digital brain and make our system smart. Think about if the oil drilling platform had a digital brain. What it would do is that it would be able to take an input from a large number of sensors, build a model that uses that to analyze um, the incoming data and tell the actuators what action to take. The photo here is actually of a, a robot that plays baseball. It's built by uh, graduate students in the University of Pennsylvania, and they actually took it out in a baseball game and it threw the opening ball. So that's something that a robot does, but what I'm talking about is doing it over a network of machines, because by its very nature, the Internet of Things is distributed. So if we are able to put a digital brain in, in a drilling platform, how would that work? So we already have a lot of sensors in there. The picture you see on the left, it's a gamma ray detector, 
which is part of what's called monitoring while drilling. These instruments are put in uh, in the drill rig. You, we also have high frequency electromagnetic sensors. We have geophones to record sound waves or seismic waves. We are, of course, measuring the temperature and the pressure. The drilling mud that's being pumped out is being analyzed. Now, all this data comes to the digital brain. It is from there we extract patterns from the data and we flag the anomalies. From those anomalies, we can label them. And when we see the propensity of a blowout happening in real time, we use the previously created model to initiate action. And it's not just action which shuts down the whole system to prevent a blowout and sends alert to the human operators in the control room, but it can also uh, do a lot of preventive maintenance and raise the overall productivity of the system. So let's go a little bit into the detail of how to create that digital brain. So in Pivotal, what we have done with projects like this, when we get a large amount of data from the sensors, like uh, a power grid, for instance, we put it into a data lake. A data lake has a few different characteristics. First of all, it has to be able to store big data, so it's a parallel system, but it also has to be able to do computations to the big data without moving the data. And then we apply our complete data science methodology. So what you already heard today from Joe, that data science methodology is something that has become pretty clear and crystallized over the years. There is the problem formulation, the data step, then the modeling step, and finally the application step. For doing something like that, we use a very high performance library of algorithms like Madlib, which does statistical and machine learning in parallel and in place. So data science and data lake together build a digital brain. Now at Pivotal, what we have done is we have spent a lot of thought and resources in building the data platform, the data lake platform, which can take data in various forms, whether it's real time, micro batch, or batch. And it's based on an open standard, which makes it future proof and also enables us to attach a lot of different products to it. But the basic standard is HDFS, the Hadoop-based file system. So we keep the data in parallel, and we can use in-memory parallel grids or MPP databases to analyze that data. And once we have built the model, we can act on it. Let me give you another example. So what about a smart grid? A smart grid is called a smart grid because we're collecting a lot of data from smart meters which basically are recording power consumption at every household and business in the city and are recording the heartbeat of the city. What do we do with that data? If we could put a digital brain in, we can use something like Fourier transform. That's a picture of Joseph Fourier, 18th century scientist. You know, So it's not a radically new idea, but a completely new context where we can use this idea. And that's what data science is all about. So we can look at the data in the frequency domain, the, look at the frequency content. It makes it very easy to extract patterns. And then we are able to send out the truck at the right time to the right place. So what do I mean when I say you know, the data science? So just to give you a glimpse of the data science, look at these two graphs. Uh, on the left, uh, one of them, the top one, is power consumption at a business, 10 weeks of data. Now, if you look on the right, that's the Fourier transform, the frequency content of it, and you will see that there's a periodicity of one cycle per day. On the other hand, the lower graph is that of power consumption of a household, and the periodicity there is two cycles per day. You do a Fourier transform, we can take, let's say, 100,000 meters, 10 weeks of data. It takes us less than five minutes to do that transform in a pivotal platform. And then, you know, we are ready to build the digital brain and make it act. And now the power company knows a tree has fallen because of a storm and is impeding power even before the residents complain. The truck is out there with the right equipment, and we have now created a smart system which is self-aware, which is able to take action. And we are not talking about taking human beings out of the picture. It actually 
augments the human operators, makes them even better. Now, Jeff Emelt of GE has said that zero unplanned downtime is a key goal for GE's use of the industrial internet. And GE is a partner of Pivotal, so we work with them, and we think that's a very good goal. But I want to go even further, and let's say that it's not just that, but we can even have zero unplanned outages, zero industrial accidents, and zero environmental disasters. Now, I urge all of us in this room, we have lots of brains here, so let's put our brains together and make this happen. The shift has already started, but let's take it to its logical conclusion. For more details, please go to my blog. I have more details and links to uh, lots of information. Thank you very much for coming today.